Hello, this is the luckiest maths teacher in the world. Thank you so much for tuning into this video in which we will go through graphing any parabola. Now, when we go to graph the parabolas, we will need to factorize and solve quadratics. So I'm going to have a quick crash course in that. So remember, a quadratic is just an equation that has an x squared term. We're solving equations of this form here, and I'm going to show you how to do it using factorization. So when you want to factorize a quadratic, you do it differently if there are two terms, if it's a quadratic binomial, than if it's a trinomial, if there are three terms. So if the quadratic has two terms, ask yourself, is there a common factor? If there is, use highest common factor. If there's not a common factor, then you use difference of two squares. If the quadratic has three terms, ask yourself if it's monic, that means the leading coefficient a is one, then you can use the product sum. It doesn't really have a name that method, but if it's not a monic quadratic, if a here is not one, you need to use the ac method in order to factorize. So whichever method of factorization you use, you then use the null factor law to solve it. So let's look at some examples. So let's say I have 6x squared minus 15x equals 0. This is a binomial because it has one, two terms. So first we ask ourselves, is there a common factor? Do these two terms share a common factor? Well, they do. They share a common factor of 3. 3 goes into 6 and 15 and also of x. So 3x out the front. Then I say, what do I times by 3x to get 6x squared? Well, that's 2x. What do I times by 3x to get negative 15x? Well, that's negative 5. So what I've done is factorized this quadratic. I've written it as something times something. That's what factorize means. We do this so we can use the null factor law. The null factor law says if something times something equals 0, either the first thing equals 0 or the second thing equals 0. So in this case, if 3x equals 0, then x is 0. If the second thing, if 2x minus 5 equals 0, add 5 divided by 2, x is 5 over 2. They are the two solutions to this equation. Let's look at this next one. 4x squared minus 9 equals 0. So we ask ourselves, do these two terms share a common factor? No, they actually don't. So then it's probably going to be difference of two squares. So this is how you do difference of two squares. Set up two brackets. So this is difference of two squares because it's a perfect square minus a perfect square. Difference means minus. So what we're going to do is square root the first and put it in both brackets. The square root of 4x squared is 2x. So then we square root the second. Square root of 9 is 3. And 1 will get a plus and 1 will get a minus. Once again, we factorize this expression. We've written it as something times something. So if you have something times something equals 0, we can use the null factor law. Either the first bracket equals 0. If 2x plus 3 equals 0, x is negative 3 on 2. And if the second bracket equals 0, x would be positive 3 on 2. We can write our solution like this. The two solutions are positive 3 on 2 and negative 3 on 2. Let's try this equation here. 3x squared minus 48 equals 0. So 3x squared and 48 both share a common factor of 3, so I write that out the front. So then what do I times by 3 to get 3x squared? That's just x squared. What do I times by 3 to get negative 48? Well, that's negative 16. Now, notice this thing in the brackets is the difference of two squares. Perfect square minus a perfect square. So I can factorize x squared minus 16, square root the first, square root the second. One gets a minus, one gets a plus. The 3 doesn't actually affect the solutions. So if x minus 4 equals 0, then x equals positive 4. If x plus 4 equals 0. If the second bracket equals 0, x equals negative 4. So the two solutions are plus and minus 4. So let's look at trinomials. So let's say I have this trinomial here. So this is monic because the coefficient of x squared is 1. So we use the product sum rule. What we do is we find two numbers that multiply to the constant and add to the middle term. So those two numbers are actually the same. They're both negative 10. Negative 10 times negative 10 is 100. Negative 10 plus negative 10 is negative 20. So those are the two numbers that go in the bracket. Negative 10 and negative 10. So if the first bracket equals 0, then x is positive 10. If the second bracket equals 0, x is again positive 10. So when you have a perfect square... 
as we do here because this is x minus 10 all squared. When you have a perfect square, there is only one solution. Usually quadratics have two solutions. Sometimes they have only one solution. Sometimes they don't have any solutions. All right, let's look at this equation here. So here again, I have one, two, three terms. So this is a trinomial, but it's not monic because the number in front of x squared is not one. So we're gonna factorize using the AC method. So it's called the AC because this number A, this number C, we multiply them together. AC is negative 20. So what we do to factorize this, we split up the middle term. And we split it up by finding two numbers that multiply to negative 20 and add to 8. So it turns out those two numbers are 10 and negative 2. So I'm going to write 8x as 10x minus 2x. And that's what I've done here. Note, it doesn't matter the order in which you write them. It wouldn't matter if I went 10x here and negative 2x there. So what I do now is I factorize the first two terms separately using highest common factor and the second two terms separately using highest common factor. So after doing this step, you should find that there is a bracket in common. We can view this as like one term and this is another term and they have a common factor of 2x minus 1. So now we write that common factor out the front and we say, what do I times by this to get the first term is 2x? What do I times by 2x minus 1 to get the second term is positive 5? So now we can use the null factor law. So if the first bracket equals 0, x would be positive a half. If the second bracket equals 0, x would be negative 5 on 2. So there we have found the two solutions. Yes, it did take a while. So we need to know all of this because it turns out solving through factorization is what we're going to do to find the x-intercepts of a parabola. So when we're graphing a parabola, a parabola is the graph of a quadratic. It's a graph of an equation of this form, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. You need to find these four things, orientation, y-intercept, x-intercepts, turning point, axis of symmetry, plot them, and it'll be easy to see what your graph looks like. So let's graph this function here. So here, a is negative 2, b is positive 9, and c is negative 4. So step 1, because a is negative negative, this is going to be a frowny face. If A was positive, it's a smiley face, but because A is negative 2, this graph is going to be a frowny face, upside down. So, second thing, the y-intercept is just the value of C. So here C is negative 4, the y-intercept is going to be negative 4. So let's now find the x-intercepts. So what we do is we change y to 0 and we solve this using the same factorization methods we went through on the previous slide. So this is a trinomial. It has three terms. It's non-monic. I need to use the AC method. So here A times C is positive 8. So what I need to do is split up this term by using two numbers that multiply to 8 and add to 9. Those numbers are, of course, positive 8 and positive 1. So now I factorize the first two using highest common factor. So the highest common factor is negative 2x. But if I look at the last two terms, x minus 4, they don't have a common factor. So I'm just going to take out a common factor of 1. Remember, at this step, I should get two brackets exactly the same, x minus 4. I need that so I can do the next step. So the next step is to write this common factor out the front and what's left minus 2x plus 1 goes in the second brackets. So using the null factor law, I get if the first bracket equals 0, x equals 4. If the second bracket equals 0, then x is 0 0.5. They are the two x-intercepts. All right, final step. I can find the turning point and axis of symmetry in one fell swoop by using this formula here. So I'm going to use x equals minus b. So this time b is 9, all divided by 2a. So 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. So this means that the turning point occurs at x equals 2.25. That is also the axis of symmetry. So to find a turning point, I need an x value and a y value. So to find the y value of the turning point, I simply substitute my x value 2.25 into the original equation and I get 6.125. 
So now I've done each of these four things, I'm ready to graph. So I found out that the y-intercept is down here at negative 4, the x-intercepts are positive 4 and positive 0 0.5, which is about there. So the turning point occurs at x equals 2.25 is about there. I go up to y equals 6.125 which is about there. So that's the turning point. So that means that this line here through x is 2.25 will be the axis of symmetry. So because I know that it's a frowning face, I now have enough to graph. I simply join up all those points using the correct parabola shape and I'm left with this. All right, thank you so much for tuning into this video. This has been the luckiest maths teacher in the world. Have a great day.